Today, uh, year ago, Japan told the League of Nations that she wished to take leave. What have I to say? Hardly anything. Time itself has spoken for me. But I am sad most for China for such action of the League. Not only will not solve anything, but will add another element of confusion. It will only place one more obstacle in the way of Japan's arduous fight against chaos. The short span of only one year has, I'm afraid, proved my fears to be too true. <clears throat> But I am glad to be able to say that Japan is emerging victorious from her fight against chaos. Manchukuo is proving to the world that he had come to stay, and at last the emperor has been enthroned in his ancestral home of Manchuria. Even China is now showing an attitude of resignation, if not conciliation, towards a natural and inevitable development. I am leaving Geneva with the prayer that the members of the League may be... I am leaving Geneva with the prayer that the members of the League may be enabled to see the light and with ardent wishes for the success of the League. These words still express the hopes and wishes of our people. In the meantime, you may be sure that we will persist in our efforts to achieve peace in the regions of Eastern Asia. Japan's one great aim and bread. This day, a year ago, Japan told the League of Nations that she wished to take leave. What have I to say? Hardly anything. Time itself has spoken for me. But may I be allowed to recall on this occasion one or two passages from my farewell message on the eve of departure from Geneva last year. I said, I am sad, not for Japan, but for the League, for taking such precipitate action. Time will show that it hurts the League more than Japan. <clears throat> I am sad most for China, for such action of the League. Not only will not solve anything, but will add another element of confusion. It will only place one more obstacle in the way of Japan's arduous fight against chaos. Manchukuo is proving to the world that she had come to stay, and at last the emperor has been enthroned in his ancestral home of Manchuria. Even China is now showing an attitude of resignation, if not conciliation, towards a natural and inevitable development. I said again, in any case, let us hope this action of the League will not widen the gap that separates East from West. I am still hoping that someday Japan will be understood. I am leaving Geneva with a prayer that the members of the League may be enabled to see the light and with ardent wishes for the success of the League. In the meantime, you may be sure that we will persist in our effort to achieve peace in the regions of Eastern Asia, Japan's one great aim and bed. <coughs> However, I am glad to be able to say that Japan is emerging victorious from her fight against chaos. May I be allowed to recall on this occasion 
one or two passages from my farewell message on the eve of departure from Geneva last year.